This is part 70 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to load more data on page scroll using jQuery Ajax. This is continuation to part 69, so please watch part 69 before proceeding. Here is what we want to achieve. We're going to have this database table TBL employee. Let's assume this table has thousands and thousands of rows. Now, we want to display this data on a web page as you can see here. But on the initial page load, we don't want to load all the rows from the database table. We only want to load the first set of 50 rows on the initial page load. As we scroll down on the page and when we hit the bottom of the page, that's when we want to load the next set of 50 rows, that is rows from 51 to 100. If we scroll down again and when we hit the bottom of the page again, then we want to load the next set of 50 rows, that is rows from 101 to 150. So this is very similar to Facebook. If you log into your Facebook page and as you scroll down and when you hit the bottom of the page, that's when additional data will be loaded. So let's see how to achieve this using jQuery Ajax. So the first step here is to create this database table, which I have already done. And here is the create table script. This insert script right here is going to insert only five rows. I have already inserted 200 rows into this employee table. So that's the first step. Create the table and populate it with test data. The second step is to create a stored procedure which is going to return us paged data. This stored procedure is going to have two input parameters, page number and page size. If the page size is 50 and if I ask for the first page, then the stored procedure should return rows from 1 to 50. If I ask for the second page, then the stored procedure should return rows from 51 to 100. So let's go ahead and create that stored procedure. Let's call this spGetEmployees and it's going to have two input parameters, page number and the type is going to be integer and page size and the type of this parameter is also going to be integer. And within the body, I'm going to declare two integer variables. So let's call the first variable start row, and it's going to be of type integer, and the second variable is going to be end row, again of type integer. Now let's go ahead and compute the values for start row and end row. So depending on page number and page size, we should compute the start row and end row. So start row equals page number. So that's the parameter. I'm going to subtract one from that. And whatever result we get, I'm going to multiply that with page size. And whatever result we get, I'm going to add one to that. Now let's go ahead and compute end row value. If this logic is not clear at the moment, don't worry. When you you know work with parameter values, that's when this logic will be clear. So end row equals, I'm going to simply multiply page number with page size. Okay? Now I'm going to make use of a CTE. So with Let's call the CTE, the common table expression result. Now, if you're new to CTE, we discuss them in detail in our SQL Server video tutorial, so please check that. So let's call the CTE result as, now within the CTE, I want all the columns and all the rows from TBL employee table. Now. In addition to all the columns, that is ID, name, gender, and salary columns, I also want to compute row number. And to compute row number, I'm going to use SQL Server row number function. So row number over, let's order the data by ID column in ascending order. And let's give this row number column a name within our CTE. So let's call this row number. So now this CT is going to contain all the columns from TBL employee table and this row number column. Now what I'm going to do is select all the columns from result CT where row number is between you know whatever start row and end row that we have here. So let's go ahead and issue a select query. Select star from result where 
row number, that's the column within our CD, where row number is between at start row and at end row. Right, let's go ahead and create this stored procedure. Now let's quickly go over the logic of this stored procedure. Let's assume we pass page number as 1 and page size as 50. So if it's page size is 50 and if we are asking for the first page, then it should return as rows from 1 to 50. So let's see what we get in these variables. So here we are saying page number minus 1. Page number is 1, so 1 minus 1 is going to be 0. 0 multiplied by page size. Page size is 50. 0 multiplied by 50 is 0. And we are adding 1 to that. So 0 plus 1 is 1. End row equals page number multiplied by page size. Page number is 1, page size is 50. So 1 multiplied by 50 is 50. So start row is 1, end row is 50. And here we are going to get rows from 1 to 50. If we pass you know, page number as 2, then 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 multiplied by 50 is 50. And we are adding 1 to that. 51 is the start row. End row is going to be page number is 2 and page size is 50. So 2 multiplied by 50 is 100. So we get rows from 51 to 100. Let's quickly test this. So if I pass page number as 1 and page size as 50, and when we execute this, we should get rows from, first of all, notice here, we get 50 rows. And as we scroll down, we only have 50 rows. And if you notice the row number column, we are getting rows from 1 to 50. If we pass page number as 2, and when we execute this, we should get rows from 51 to 100. So this stored procedure is returning us paged data. Now that's it from the database side. Create the table, create the stored procedure. Now let's flip to our web application. So here I have included a connection string within the web.config file to this database table, TBL employee. Now let's go ahead and create an employee class. For that, let's add a class file. And let's call this employee.cs. And this class is going to have four properties, ID, name, gender, and salary. So these properties correspond to the columns that we have in this TBL employee table, ID, name, gender, and salary. So we have the employee class there. Next, let's go ahead and create our web service. So to this project, let's add a new item. And the item that we want to add is a web service. And let's call the service employee service. Now we want the service to be called from script. So I'm going to uncomment that line there. And we're going to write some ADO.NET code here. So let's go ahead and bring in the ADO.NET namespaces. We need system.configuration, we need system.data, and we need system.data.sql client. And we also need system.web.script.serialization namespace because we want to use the JavaScript serializer class that's present in this namespace to serialize the output to a JSON format. All right, so let's go ahead and change the name of this method. Let's call this function get employees. And this function is going to have two parameters, page number and page size. And this function is actually not going to return anything. So I'm going to change the return type to void. And within the function, what we are going to do, we are going to write some ADO.NET code to retrieve data from the SQL Server database table, TBL employee. And we have already returned that stored procedure as well. The name of the stored procedure is SP get employees. In the interest of time, I have already written the ADO.NET code. This has got nothing to do with jQuery. So let's copy and paste that within our get employees function. And if you look at this code, this is straightforward ADO.NET code. So first we are creating an object of type list employee to store the list of employees that we want to return. And we are reading the connection string from web.config file. Using that connection string, we are building a SQL connection object. And then we are building a SQL command object. Using this command object, we want to execute a stored procedure with the name SP get employees. Since the command is executing a stored procedure, we have to tell that to the command object using the command type property. And this stored procedure has got two parameters. That is 
page number and page size. So we need to associate those parameters with the command object. So here we are creating a parameter object. So the first parameter is page number and the value for that is coming you know, from this method parameter. Similarly, we're creating the second parameter, page size, and the value is coming from the second parameter. Okay, And we are opening the connection, executing the command, looping through the rows that we get, constructing an employee object for each row, and then populating the ID name, gender, and salary properties of the employee object, adding that employee object to the list that we have created on the top right here. Okay, so after we complete this loop, we'll have all the employees added to the list. And then what we are doing finally, if we are creating an instance of the JavaScript serializer class and using the serialize method, we are serializing the list of employee objects to a JSON array and writing that to the response stream. So straightforward ADO.NET code. So let's go ahead and build this project and let's quickly view this in the browser and test our web service to make sure it works as expected. So we have this get employees function available. Let's say page number is one and if we pass page size is 50 and when we click this invoke button, we should get the 50 rows. Okay. Now if we pass page number as two, then we should get the second set of 50 rows. That is rows from 51 to 100. Okay, all right, so our web service is working as expected. Now let's go ahead and call that web service using jQuery. So I have already added HTML page one dot HTML to this project, and within the body section, I have included the HTML as well. So if we view that HTML in the browser, this is how it looks like at the moment. So we have this literal text, the data will be loaded on demand as you scroll down the page, and then we have a table here. And that table has got an ID, TBL employee. And then within the table, we have a table head section. So within the head, we have ID, name, gender, and salary. That's what are displayed here. And then we have a body section. So what we want to do now is call the web servers, retrieve the rows using jQuery Ajax, loop through each of them, build a table row, and append that table row to the T body section of this table. So let's see how to do that. So first of all, within our ready function, I'm going to create another function. So this is our JavaScript function. I'm going to call this load data because that's what the purpose of this function is going to be. It will load data by issuing a Ajax request. And to this function, I'm going to pass current page. Okay. And what do we want to do? We want to issue an Ajax request. And to do that, we are going to make use of this Ajax function. So let's specify the options for the Ajax request. So the first one is going to be the URL that we want to issue the request to. The URL is this web service, employee service dot ASMX. And within that web service, we have a function which we want to call. And the name of that function is get employees. And if you look at this function, it has got two parameters, page number and page size. We have to supply values for those parameters as well. So that's the URL that we want to call. And we want to issue a post request. So I'm going to use the method option and specify the request type as post. And since that function has got parameters, we need to supply values for page number and page size. So I'm going to use the data parameter. Uh, so page number. So the parameter here, I mean the property here should match the parameter that we have here. So let's actually copy that to make sure. So page number, where are we going to get the page number? We are going to get it from the function parameter. So we have a parameter coming into this function. So let's pass that here current page and page size is the second parameter. So page size, where are we going to get that from? I'm actually going to hard code that to 50. So page number is coming from this parameter, page size is hard coded to 50. And the data type that we are expecting from the server is JSON. 
and when the request completes successfully I am going to associate a callback function so this function is going to receive the data when the request completes and what do we want to do with that data we want to display those rows within this table TBL employee. So first of all, let's find this table. This table has got an ID, TBL employee. So I'm going to create a variable here and let's call this EMP table equals, let's use the jQuery ID selector and find the table. We actually want to append the rows that we are going to build to the body section of this table. So I'm going to actually find the body section. So find T body that's present in table with ID TBL employee. All right, now we know that this data is a JSON object. In fact, it's a JSON array. We want to loop through each employee role that we have got within that JSON array. So I'm going to use jQuery each function. So dollar data, and on that, let's call the jQuery each function. And to this function, let's pass those two parameters, the index of the employee object and the employee object itself. So every time we get the employee object. So what do we want to do? We want to append to this employee table the row that we are looping through. So we want to dynamically build a table row and append that to this EMP table. So I'm going to use append function. And what do we want to do? We want to create a TR. And within the TR, we are going to have a TD. So within the first TD, we are going to have the ID property value, emp.id. And then what do we want to do? We want to close the TD and open another TD. Okay, so let's actually copy this. And to that, what do we want to do? In that TD, next we want to display the name of the employee. And to that, let's append, you know, we want to close the TD, open another TD, EMP, next we want to retrieve or display gender, and then another plus, close that TD, open another TD, and then we want to display salary. And finally, we want to, we need a plus symbol here. Finally, we want to close the TD and close the TR. So a little bit of string building here. But this should you know, be very clear. So basically, we are within each TD, we are displaying employee ID, employee name, employee gender, and salary. Okay. So as it loops through, it's going to build a TR every time for every row, and then append that TR to the body section of this table. It's as simple as that. Okay. So very simple load data function here. Okay, now we want to call this function when the page initially loads, when the document is ready. So I'm going to call load data function and specify that we want to load the first page of data. So I'm going to create a variable. Uh, let's call this current page number and let's initialize that to one. And let's pass that variable to this function. Okay, so when the page initially loads, this function gets called and it should load the first set of 50 rows. So let's save all these changes. Let's go ahead and run that and look at that. When the page loads, it actually is loading first 50 rows. And look at this, when we hit the bottom of the page by scrolling down, it doesn't load any data on demand. Now what do we want to do when we hit the bottom of the page? We want to load the next set of 50 rows. Let's see how to achieve that. Now, as we are scrolling on the page, you know, what event is raised, scroll event is raised, right? We want to handle or capture that event. So let's go ahead and do that. So dollar vendor dot scroll. So we want to associate, you know, some code with that event. So when that event occurs, we want to execute some code. Now we don't want to load data when we simply scroll like this, you know, if we are at the top of the page, when I scroll to the half, I don't want to load any data at that point. I want to load data only when I hit the bottom of the page, right? So we have to detect somehow that the user has scrolled down to the bottom of the page. And how can we do that? We discussed that in detail in our previous video session. So please watch that video before proceeding with this video. So how to detect if the user has hit the bottom of the page? So we basically 
use the vendor. So let's use an if condition here. So vendor dot scroll top. What is this function going to do? This function is going to return as the current vertical position of the scroll bar. If that is equal to dollar document dot height minus vendor height. So if this condition is true, if the current you know, vertical scroll bar position equals to document height minus window height, then that means the user has hit the bottom of the page. So that's when we want to load additional data. And to load additional data, we can make use of this function. But we want to load the next page of data. So at the moment, initially, when the page loads, we are displaying the first page of data. When we hit the bottom of the page, we first want to increment this value by 1. So I'm going to say current page number plus equals 1. So increment it by 1. And then call load data function and pass the variable. So we want page number 2. If you are on page number 2, then we will increment it to page number 3 and then pass that. All right. So let's go ahead and save those changes, run the page one more time, and look at this. Now, initially, it loads the first set of 50 rows. And when we hit the bottom of the page, look at what's going to happen. It actually loaded the next set of 50 rows. Remember, we have got 200 rows in the table. So now, when we hit the bottom again, look at what is going to happen. It's going to load rows from 101 to 150. And look at this. When I hit the bottom, you know, it should load the next set of 50 rows. So from 151 to 200. Now, after 200, we don't have any rows, so nothing happens. So we have displayed all the data in the table. So here we have the stood procedure that we have created. This is our web service code. Here is the HTML of the page and the jQuery code. Thank you for listening and have a great day.